Hey guys, today I have a quick start tutorial for Pixelmator Pro. Pixelmator Pro is a photo editing app that's designed just for Mac users like you and me. It's kind of an alternative to Photoshop. What's great about it is it's a one-time flat fee for the app. It's not like the ongoing rental that Adobe does. So today we're going to be using this photo here that I got off of Pixabay. I will link to it down in the comments so you can follow along with me on this tutorial. I'm going to show you how to get started in Pixelmator Pro and some of the most important tools that I think you need to know. We're not going to cover everything because Pixelmator does a lot, but this is going to be the first in a series of tutorials to get you really moving and grooving in Pixelmator. Let's just dive right into it. Here's what Pixelmator Pro looks like when you first to open it. The first thing you need to do is decide what size your project is going to be. So over here under presets, there's a lot of different options that are categorized into basically like the final use of your project. You can also type in a custom size and resolution, and you can customize your color depth as well. There's also templates here for you to choose from. And Pixelmator frequently adds templates to this menu here. So we could choose a specific size for our image project, but what if you wanted the project to have the same properties as the original image you are working with? Let me show you how to do that. So here's the image we got off of Pixabay. What you can do is right click and then select open with, and we are going to select Pixelmator Pro. And now here we are in an open working project in Pixelmator Pro. Let me just give you like a quick tour here. Over here is your layers pane. So as we add elements into our project, they will show up here in our layers. In the center, of course, is our canvas where we'll see the image we are designing. And all the way to the right side of the screen are all of our different tool options. And then as we select different tools, this window here will change depending on what modifications we can make to our project. The first thing you need to know is how to navigate in your canvas. So if you wanted to zoom out, you could hit command and the minus sign. And to zoom in would be command and the plus sign. Now to grab your image and move it around the canvas, you need what's called the arrange tool. The shortcut for this is V. That gives me my basic cursor here. It's also this top tool in our tools menu. And with the arrange tool, I can reposition my image within the canvas. And I can also grab the corners of this bounding box and resize it. I'm going to hit command Z to undo that because I do want this image to fill my entire frame. Now the next set of tools you definitely need to know about are the selection tools. There's three of them in Pixelmator Pro and they are these three icons right here. Now you can see this first one here, I've got set to the rectangular selection tool, but if I hold down my mouse key over that icon, you can see that I can have the rectangular selection, but also an elliptical and row and column shapes as well. The next selection tool is this one here. This is the free selection tool. And if I hold down my cursor, I get these other options as well. But the other option is the quick selection tool or the color selection tool. And these ones are really great. Quick selection means I can run my cursor over different parts of my image hold down my mouse key and click and drag. And I could cut out this bird and it uses edge detection to figure out what part of this image I actually want to select. It's actually pretty smart. Once I release my mouse, you can see that my selection is outlined in dotted lines. And once I have that selection made, I can hit the V key to go back to the arrange tool and I can actually just move part of that image. I'm going to hit command Z to undo that. And if I want to get rid of that selection, I just hit command D to deselect. The other great selection tool here is the color selection tool. And this detects the colors of my image. And so it'll grab just specific color ranges. I'm going to hit command D to deselect that. But what I think is the coolest selection feature in Pixelmator Pro is the select subject button. So under any of these selection tools, no matter which one I'm selected on, you'll see that there's a button here that says select subject. So I'm going to hit that and look what it's done. It's actually used machine learning to identify the subject of my image, which of course is this bird, and it has outlined it perfectly. And now once I have this selection, I'm going to right click in my canvas and I'm going to copy and paste this as a layer. Now look in my layers window and look at what I have here. I have my original image and I also have, if I mute that, I have just the bird cut out. If I disable the bird, you can see that my original 
image has been maintained. So I've got my untouched photo here, and then I've got just my bird soloed out. I'm gonna hit Command D to deselect this bird cutout. And let's move on to the next tool I think you need to know about, and that is the saturation tool. You can find that here in our tools menu. If I hold down on my mouse key, you can see that I can choose saturate or desaturate. I wanna be on desaturate. And what this allows me to do is to paint over my selected layer. In this case, I'm selected on the full image here and desaturate those areas of the frame. So I'm going to increase my brush size here and I can focus on desaturating just particular parts of this image based on the color range. So I could do all of the image or I could do the shadows, midtones, or highlights. Let's crank up the strength all the way to hundred and let's target those midtones. So we can see that our bird is really popping off the background here. Let's move on to the next tool I think you definitely need to know about, and that is the color adjustments tool. So the shortcut for this guy is A, or you can select this icon here, and it brings up a very large menu of color enhancements that we can make. But there is one particular feature I wanna focus here. Let's make sure we're selected on our bird in our layers pane. And I wanna focus on the selective color, color correction feature. What we can do here is select different color tones in this range and affect the hue, saturation, and brightness of just those tones in our image. So I'm going to select the orange tones because I wanna change up these orange tones here in my bird. So I'm going to select the orange in my selective color menu, and I'm going to play with the hue so it looks more yellow. Then I wanna really saturate the blues in this bird. So I'm going to select the teal tones here and I'm gonna push up the saturation a little bit. Now this bird is really popping off that background. Now, if I changed my mind and I wanted to get rid of this effect, let me show you how to do that because that's important. You'd head on over to your layers, right click, go to color adjustments since that's the adjustment we just made and you could reset the adjustments. But I'm gonna leave this where we are. And now I want to show you the next tool I think you need to know about, which is the paintbrush tool. The shortcut for this is B, or you can find the paintbrush tool over here in the tools menu. And this allows us to paint directly on one of our image layers, or we can create just a blank layer to paint on. So let's do that by going up to the top of our layers panel and selecting this plus sign in the circle. Now we have an empty image layer. I'm going to head on over to my paintbrush menu here, and I'm going to pick kind of an icy blue. My brush is this medium basic brush. I'm just gonna stick with this brush, but there are a lot of different other style brushes that you could work with. I'm gonna have my brush size pretty big here and pretty soft, and the opacity I'm gonna crank all the way up to 100. And I'm going to focus my attention here at the bottom of our image where these water rings are happening. And I'm just gonna color this in like so. Now we've completely lost all of the detail here in our water rings, which I know is not what we want. So we're actually going to change the blend mode. So select that image layer with the blue paint here in our layers pane and head up to this menu here. These are all of our different blend modes. And if you run your mouse down them, you can see what they all do. I'm gonna go with soft light. So it's just giving us a soft wash without losing a lot of detail. And now let's focus our attention on the top part of the water here. I'm going to create a new layer and we're gonna use the paintbrush tool again. This time I'm going to pick like a very soft green. And on this one, I'm going to dial down the opacity very low. And now I'm just gonna color over that frame. And let's change the blend mode on this one to also soft light. And I wanna make sure that my bird is not getting lost here in this image. So I'm going to drag it from almost the bottom of my layers pane to the top. So he's still very vibrant looking. All right, the next tool you definitely need to know about is the type tool. So you can find that very easily here in your tools menu. It looks like a T or you could just hit the T shortcut. And so I'm gonna select that and I'm just gonna click anywhere in my image and I get a word that says text here. I'm gonna type out the word Kingfisher in all caps, and I wanna change my font here. So I'm gonna select all this type, and I'm going to head up to my menu here, and I'm going to select this font here called Antonio. Then I'm gonna click anywhere outside my image so that I can reposition this text. And for me, it's dropped it right where I wanted it in my layers panel. I want it behind my bird, and if it's at the top of your layers panel, just 
drag it down underneath your bird. Now to change the color of this text, I actually wanna pick from my image so that the color kind of feels like part of the image. So I'm going to head on over to my color menu here and grab this eyedropper. Now I can run my mouse around my image and pick a color that I think will look good with this text. I love the tone of this, but I'd like to make it a little bit brighter. So I'm gonna again, head on over to the color menu. And now this time I'm going to select this color here and now I can just stay within the family, but brighten that up a bit. Now I wanna make this text pop a little bit more though. So that brings us to our next tool, which is the stylize tool. That is the second tool down in your tool menu. The shortcut for this guy is S. So you can see this menu of options here. I want to turn on a drop shadow. So I'm just going to hit this little toggle button here. And now it reveals all of these options I have. I'm gonna make a really soft, drop shadow, and that looks great. I think it really pops off the image, but I think I wanna do something a little bit extra with this text besides the drop shadow. We can actually customize the shape of this text. This is such a great tool in Pixelmator Pro. I'm super excited to show this to you. So I'm gonna head on over to my layers panel. I'm going to select that text element, right click, and I'm going to convert it into a shape. Now, if you look in my layers panel, you can see there's a drop down now and now every single letter and look at what happens in my canvas i get a bounding box over every letter as i select it these characters are now shapes they are no longer text and so now what we can do with this text is change the shape of it i'm going to focus on my k here and right click and then i'm going to select make editable and now you can see that my k has points all the way around it and i can actually grab and reposition these points. I'm gonna undo that. Or I can add points by just double clicking along the blue line here. Let me zoom way in so you can see. Now, once I've zoomed way in on my canvas, if I hold down the space bar, my cursor turns into this little hand and I can hold down the space bar and maneuver around my screen as I'm zoomed in. So I'm going to create some new points here and I'm going to just reposition these points so that they're underlining the remainder of my text. And if I wanna smooth out these points, I just select one. It's red now because I've selected it. I'm gonna right click and I can make it smooth. And then I get what are called tangents here that I can reposition and move around that impact the curvature of my text. This is the kind of thing you just need to play with to get a feel for it. You guys, while I'm playing with these points, if you like this video, if you wanna see more Pixelmator Pro tutorials, let me know, give me that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and tell me in the comments what you wanna know more about. Now that I've converted my text into shapes and I've modified the shape a little bit, the next thing I think I wanna do is add more of like a gradient fill on this text. And you can do that using the next tool I know you need to know about, and that is the effects tool, the shortcut for which is E, or you can head on over to this icon right here. So there's all these pre-designed effects that you can apply with the effects tool, but let's just hit add effect here and you can see there's even more under this menu. I'm gonna select fill and I'm going to select gradient fill. And so you can see it's defaulted the gradient fill to a black to white gradient, but I wanna go back to the color family that I chose earlier. So to do that, I can select this black color tab in my spectrum here, and it remembers the last colors I used. So I'm gonna select my most recent color selection. That is the original color of the text. Now let's click back over above the spectrum here to close that window and now pick the white color tag. And let's just pick something a little bit brighter than our original selection. Now let's play with the placement of this gradient. You have some options here. The first selection that's already by default uses a linear gradient. So it's gonna go left to right or right to left. The second one is a radial gradient. So if I select that, you can see that the darker color is focused in the center. The lighter colors are on the outside. And the next option is an angle gradient. And you can see if I spin around this wheel here, it changes the angle of the gradient. So you get a harsh line and the color fades out to the lighter tone. I'm gonna undo all those changes we just made back to our original configuration. I wanna show you that if I wanted the lighter color on the left as opposed to the right, I could hit this little button here so it reverses the gradient. Or if I'm selected on the linear gradient and I spin this wheel around, 
I can play with the angles so the darker color is on the top and the lighter color is on the bottom or vice versa. I'm going to manually type in a value here because I want the lighter color on the top, the darker color on the bottom. So I'm going to go 270. And so that's the desired look I want pretty much. I can also play with the scale. So as I dial it down, you can see the differentiation between the darker color and the lighter color gets more abrupt and less soft. And if I scale it way up, you really can't even tell the difference between these colors. I'm gonna scale way down here to this kind of look. And then I'm gonna dial down the opacity to really finish off my look here. So there you go, guys. That is a basic before and after of an image I edited in Pixelmator Pro. Do you guys wanna see more Pixelmator Pro content? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I picked out some other videos I know you're gonna love and I'll see you again.